world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio. Let's uh, talk about uh, this uh, two-year anniversary with my next guest. Uh, he's senior clinical lecturer at the University of Exeter Medical School and an infectious disease management expert. Dr. Barrett Pancania joins us right now. Good morning to you, Barrett. Hello, good morning. Good two morning. years on from uh, three weeks to flatten the curve. Um, what are your thoughts today? Um, it's very sad, really, in that um, we could have done better. And considering we are a uh, highly skilled, highly developed country, uh, step by step, we got many things wrong. And people have died, and people have been affected, mental health, as you mentioned, etc. We could have done better. So I feel a little sad about it all. It seems to me that an awful lot of the people who say we could have done better, and the focus, an awful lot of focus of the lockdown, in, uh, sorry, the pandemic inquiry, is going to be about whether or not doing better would have meant going into lockdown sooner, despite the fact that all the evidence very, very early on um, in, the, in the first lockdown, and certainly since, and certainly when we've chosen, not, well, the government has frankly not given in to the fear mongers and not locked down, has shown that actually cases go up, cases go down. You don't need to lock down whole populations, close schools, close businesses uh, for that to happen. Is, is that what we should have done better? I think if we had acted a lot earlier and kept case numbers down, then we wouldn't have had that fear of overwhelming the National Health Service. And When you and, say acted a lot earlier, what do you mean by that action? <clears throat> so we had a rising tide of number of cases. And of course, Prime Minister Johnson was reluctant to do anything until he was presented with a modelling paper from Imperial. And then suddenly, overnight, mm. he said, we are going into lockdown. So there was that uh, pregnant pause, shall we say. And no, but I'm asking, are you saying we should have locked down sooner? Yes. See, that too... Look, you're, we've spoken many times. I've got huge respect I for you, and I, I understand your expertise, and I don't pretend to be an epidemiologist or an infectious disease expert at all. But I find it staggering that someone of your intelligence, experience and expertise can look at all the data we've seen for the last two years and still, like so many others, argue that. Well, look at New Zealand, but let me just explain <laughs> yes, to you. Yes, no. yes, look at New Zealand. How's that working um, out? OK, so early intervention gives you better results early in, early out. We went in late and then we come out late and it is a prolonged process as we have suffered. So what I'm trying to say is if you nip it in the bud, you have a better outcome. And if you have early extensive interventions and you restrict the flow of this virus that is spreading through a community that you don't have anything for, i.e. we didn't have antiretrovirals, mm. we didn't have vaccines, we didn't know what we were going to do. So in that circumstance there, early shutdown would have stopped okay. a lot of people from dying. Well, 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 we say this, we say this, OK, but we know among the reasons, we know that at all, we had excess deaths in that first spring and indeed in the in winter 2021. 20, 20, no doubt at all, I'm, you know, knew me, I'm not COVID denier. It's, it's a serious disease. I've always taken it seriously. I had it when we went into lockdown to this time two years ago. Um, but the, we've looked at countries like Peru. You know, Brazil was often criticised. Peru went very early into lockdown, very strict lockdown, to the extent that men and women weren't allowed out on the same days. It was so strict. Um, and all the data proved they had a strict one. They've had some of the worst, I think, possibly the worst death toll per capita in the entire world. There are loads of countries which prove that that claim completely and utterly wrong. The reality is that countries like Sweden that didn't lock down, people voluntarily chose to limit a lot of their contact to protect people who were, who were at risk, um, that, that they have had a more successful outcome than most other countries that locked down. I think we shouldn't keep on looking at Sweden, Sweden, really? Sweden all the time. Sweden is different to the United Kingdom, sparsely populated. It has cities with high population in some places, but mostly it's sparsely populated and people are in an outdoors culture. Well, London, for example, is one of the mega cities, 10 million plus population. So what applies to Sweden cannot apply no, to London. No, but even if you, if you compare Sweden to a couple of the other Scandinavian countries, it, it even does better. But, no, but the key thing about what you've made, that it, it's almost, again, the opposite point. Britain is a very, you know, international, global city with lots of transport links, our, our tourism, our business. It, we, we, could, we could never have done what New Zealand done. We already had COVID in the country. We couldn't have kept it out. 
It was going to be here anyway. We'd already had it, looks like it was in this country as early as possibly December 2019. In which case, once it's already here, any attempt to go for what was for all intents and purposes a, a zero COVID policy would have been doomed to failure. We didn't have the vaccine then. How many, how many months or years would we have stayed in lockdowns or versions of um, if we hadn't discovered the vaccine? So once you have not done what you should have done earlier on, the rest becomes academic and we are where we are at. So what I'm trying to say in, in for example, uh, soon after March, so about April, May time, 2020. Uh, Chief Medical, yeah, 2020. Chief Medical Officer said, um, we are now giving up on contact tracing and identifying mm -hmm. cases and restrictions because our system could not do the contact tracing. It wasn't a case of, it wasn't a case of we don't need to do it. It was a case of we can't do it. We haven't got the tools to do it. Mm. Therefore, we're giving up. Yeah. And then, of course, the infection spreads across the country. And then, of course, afterwards, we started to shut our borders and have restrictions on travel and all that. All of that was symbolic too late. Yeah, I mean, look, there's no doubt at all there were some massive failures on pandemic planning, the amount of PPE, yes. the contract tracing. Um, yes. The, the, I mean, let's, let's ship a load of old people with COVID out of hospitals into Indeed. care homes and infect care homes. Um, let's have pretty much no infection control within hospitals. Still got that massive problem now. It's most likely yes. place to get infected right now is still in a hospital, not in a nightclub. Those, those are the stats. Um, yes. But we know all of those things. But I mean, that's a failure of what happened up to the point we had the pandemic. And certainly I think we need to learn a lot of lessons there. And I fear we haven't even learnt those even now. I but, agree. But in terms of where we go forward, cases are going up at the moment. There are still people who are saying we should have more restrictions, uh, mask mandates and things like that. Um, and it's crazy for the government not to have had more restrictions at Christmas, crazy for them to drop the mask mandate, despite all of the evidence that the countries that had a lot of those things didn't see uh, uh, any any better uh, death rates or, or, or spread case rates than we did, um, despite having those measures. At what point will people start looking in your field at actual evidence base for their, their theories? Because when the evidence is clear in front of you that these things don't make any difference, other than if people aren't mixing and going out at all from their homes, they can't spread it until they come out again. Unless we live in lockdown forever. We know COVID is going to be with us forever. Chris Whitty, Patrick Valance, they were saying that back in March 2020. Then we just stopped listening to... Well, they stopped saying that what the actual truth. When is, when is the scientific and medical establishment going to actually admit that, that what we did was against all scientific evidence and pandemic planning because that because we did we did something that was copying a totalitarian government on the other side of the world that was the exact opposite of world health organization and uk pandemic planning and we did it and no one's even admitting it was a mistake but but julia you haven't said at one point that when are the politicians going to actually listen to uh the advice of their scientific officers because it they did. is it is really up. It is, they they did. That's the point. They did. Chris Whitty and no, Patrick Ballard did do. not want lockdown no. before the 23rd of March. I know, but no, no, no. Come on. No, they didn't. Sage uh, never even discussed lockdown. At any point, Sage never even discussed lockdown in all of the meetings. See, meetings. Let us see what the inquiry produces, because what we hear is not necessarily all that was said. Because I know people were talking about what can we do to flatten the curve, as we say it, and bring in control measures. And there was a lot of conflict between, um, on the one side, the scientists, on the other side, Prime Minister Johnson not wishing to bring in those restrictions. He brought in those restrictions very reluctantly. Yeah, but I'm telling you, Sage never talked about a lockdown, never discussed a lockdown. We've seen the minutes of the meetings. And by the way, you say the scientists. There were plenty of other scientists, uh, uh, you know, many who signed the Great Barrington Declaration, eminent scientists at Harvard, Oxford, uh, Stanford universities, saying very different things. They weren't being listened to. They've turned out to be the people who were right all along. I don't know. <laughs> Time will tell us, but look, 
when you are in the middle of a pandemic and you want to save lives, there are many things you can do, you should do. So, for example, uh, discharging patients back to nursing yeah. homes was a gross error, gross error, negligence, really. Yeah. And a colossal number of our elderly people died in nursing homes. And then, furthermore, to how enduring restrictions in nursing homes whereby you can't yeah. visit your loved Even ones. Even today. And people all failings. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll, agree on, we'll agree on that note. Uh, really good to talk to you, Dr. Barrett of Ancania. Thank you very much indeed. Good talk. Hot talk. Talk. Bold talk. talk radio. Listen on your smart speaker. Watch it live on your smart TV. The world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio.